We're in the Volvo V90 cross country, latest and greatest, even has a roof rack. Did you notice our box? We've got a box. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. The V90 is brilliant. It's very good. Every time we get into Volvo, as Todd said, I keep being reminded about how good it is, mm -hmm. how luxurious it is. And then when you see the price after experiencing this, you think, that's it? I know that this is 67000 almost $68,000. Which is a lot. Which is a lot of money. But this is the big boy, the V90, the wagon, the, the cross country, the, the one you actually want because it's got the space. It does have the box. I like the wagon. I'm always impressed. I like the wagon a lot. You get in this, I'm always impressed. I don't know that the cross country is the one you want though. Absolutely, the more I drive, it's the, the more one you want. I disagree. The more I drive this one, the more I want the standard V90. Well, of course, it's wonderful to drive, but I think this is an interesting niche that sets Volvo apart. Okay. Audi's been doing this with the A4 and the A6 all road. Mm -hmm. Mercedes is jumping into the E-Class wagon all terrain. Mm -hmm. And Porsche is doing it with the Taycan Cross Turismo. This is kind of a thing. It's a unique little niche. It doesn't necessarily sell in huge volumes. No. But I like what they're doing with this. If you don't want an SUV. Yes. And you still want a little bit more ground clearance, kind mm -hmm. of SUV sorts of things. And Volvo calls this a crossover. Which, isn't that interesting? Because it's yes. not, but they call it that anyway. A it's luxury intriguing. crossover. Uh, it's intriguing. Okay, it's a wagon. But, but if you, you can't want say those wagon. things, yeah. and you don't love sitting up high, but you still want a car-like feel mm -hmm. and ride now with the space that yeah. you think SUVs have, yes. this is the one for you. This has. We talk about this a lot. This has yeah. more space than a lot of five-seat SUVs that yeah. people buy because they think, I need more space. It's encouraging. This has more. Yeah. This feels good to drive. The interior feels luxurious. I think... This is the step up for the Outback owner. This is absolutely the aspirational vehicle that the Outback owner with a roof box I would, wants. I would love to see these as much as we see Outbacks in the Rocky <laughs> Mountains. The, the Outback is like the default choice. It's just like I fell over and landed in an, in an Outback. Seriously! It's like the, the ball pit at McDonald's. It's, 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 either, it's either a gray or white <laughs> Subaru Outback. I just, I didn't care. I threw my wallet up in the air and an Outback landed in the drive. That's oh, what an Outback is. Oh, I yeah. wish these were that ubiquitous. I agree. Because this is, this feels like, granted, $67,000 is probably $20,000 more than any Outback on the planet, almost 30. Yeah. So it's a lot yeah. more expensive, but this is the step up. It's the right step up from that Outback. It's Agreed. very much in the same class. It's also existing because of calling it a luxury crossover. It's existing in that same place as the Outback where, don't call it a wagon. Nobody it's buys a wagon. wagon. It's a cool wagon. It's a very cool wagon. We like wagons. Yeah, I, yeah. yes. It's gorgeous to look at, but we're going to talk about the styling in a little bit after we talk about the power because it's supercharged and turbocharged. Volvo is using the same engine through their entire lineup, hybrid One included. Engine. One engine. Which is a smart business move, It's actually. interesting. It's if, a smart move. If you meet a mechanic who's worked on a Volvo engine in the last five years, he's seen this engine. Whatever <laughs> Volvo you bring Indeed. in, he's seen that engine. It's Indeed. the same engine. How many snails and things did we just tie to it to give it more power? This is a step down from the T8 Monster. We yes. love the yes. Monster Hybrid Everything version, oh. which was Sleeper in the S60. Supreme. This is a step down from that, but it's still pretty good. I have detected the two power bands for the supercharger and mm. the turbocharger. The supercharger is designed for low-end torque, you know that. But yes. then they've screwed a turbocharger, which is not far away. Everything is really compact. Really. And it gets you the high end. So there's two power bands. It's really nice. Yep. You get that low-end torque, and then there's the briefest of pauses, and then you get into the turbo. And it's wonderful to have both, depending on where you're at in traffic, what your speed is. This car doesn't move like the weight, 4,200 pounds, mm -hmm. and the size suggests. I agree. This is a large car. It is. It's very big. Let me put it in perspective. The wheelbase is seven inches shorter than an Expedition. I'm talking in large car terms, but yes. this is a big, long, Absolutely. beautiful, Absolutely. sculptural yes. car. And it is more of a car to me. I just, I like the, the unique positioning. Mm -hmm. It's the off-road. 
it's not for everybody, but it's a discerning choice. Yes. And then when you get into this power band, the engine sounds thrashy, but you, you get the two, like, oh, there's it the super, thrashy. super turbo. It super sounds, it turbo. sounds thrashy because it's, it's a great. four cylinder, but what I've noticed is when you get into the power, you, you feel it inhale. It just kind of goes, <laughs> yeah. it takes a Boom. giant breath. I'll just put my head against yep. the headrest. Out back. <laughs> They're everywhere. Guys. You should be in this. This is just better. See, there's that pause, and then yeah. just that was the beginning of the turbo. Yep, yep. So, but but <laughs> no matter what it is, when you put your foot in it, it just kind of goes, and then it goes. <laughs> yeah, there's so much air to go into this car. <laughs> but it but yeah. it has a surprising amount of power. It's 316 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, which yep. I have to admit, thrown against the size of this car, doesn't seem like it will be enough. It doesn't. And yet, I think Agreed. because of that dual power band like you're talking about, and because of what Volvo's doing, this is all-wheel drive as well, it feels surprisingly ready to just jump. But that's the biggest thing about Volvo. It's you cannot look at any numbers, the price, the power, the steering mm. ratio. You can't look at any of the numbers and think, nah, I'm not going to be interested. Because you sit here, you get in, you start driving, you feel that power. It handles surprisingly well better than the numbers would suggest. Yes. It's got a pretty tall steering ratio, 16.7 to 1. Mm -hmm. We're used to things like 9 to 14 variable <laughs> or... Yeah, sports car stuff. You know, yeah. really low yeah, yeah. ratios. So it seems like, what's going on here? But it turns in so well, and that's because of the suspension. This car is equipped with the air suspension, which is $1,200 extra. Mm -hmm. If you don't get the air suspension, you get the, the double wishbone, well, you get that anyway in the front, but you get a rear leaf spring, a transverse leaf spring made out of composite materials, just like Corvettes have been for seven generations, <laughs> in the rear. And the reason is weight and packaging. Apparently, Volvo claims they can control the rear suspension feel a little bit better. The air suspension is really what you want. I think yes. it's worth twelve hundred bucks. Twelve hundred dollars is not a big upcharge for, for that. Come on, that's very Agreed. worth it. I mean, there's a Agreed. stereo system in here and a leather package in here, both of which are more expensive than the air suspension. Get the spin air suspension. the money yeah. on the air suspension. Yeah. Absolutely, it just it turns in better. You can still feel the weight of the car, but I'm yep. always surprised at the solidity of the car, the mm -hmm. build quality, that feeling like, oh yeah, I forgot how good Volvo has gotten. It's one of those cars that are so unexpected. You keep forgetting about it, mm. and then you come back and you think, oh yeah, I should own one of these. That's what we think of every Volvo we've driven, the, the current crop of new Volvos. Volvo is the forgotten brand right now, and I think they are, I'll put it another way, they are the forgotten luxury brand. Agreed. They're not just Agreed. a brand out there that makes stuff, because people kind of know what a Volvo is, but if you're shopping a luxury car, you need to look at Volvo. Yeah, and I don't absolutely. care how much there's a price difference between, you looked at one of the big German ones, and the Volvo's a whole lot cheaper, can't be very nice. I think you actually need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Volvo, the equivalent Volvo to whatever luxury yeah. car you're looking at, because it is worth it. I look at this, and I think, oh yeah, Wait, seventy thousand dollars? That's a lot for the. And then I realized, no, 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 I'm not comparing it. It's right. not what it's competing against. It's mm -hmm. competing against the high-end luxury brands, and at yes. that point, it's a bargain. And honestly, I'll start here in interior seats. We were talking about it earlier. Yeah. Some of the best seats in the business. We've always talked about Volvo seats for yes. decades yes. now. If Some of the best seats it. in the business. But here's the thing: heated, cooled, Massage. they massage as well because it's the big V90 and it has all the box checks and it's a press car. They're only that thick. Now, that's crazy. So go thin. go find a luxury manufacturer yes. who has a seat that does all that. They're going to be twice as big as these seats are. Other car manufacturers don't have any excuse at this point. You've seen how thick and bulky and mm -hmm. it intrudes into the rear seat legroom. Completely. So when you see somebody get into the rear seat, it actually works. Now it's the V90, it's the big it is the you know, big, boy, the big yeah. car, the big sedan, mm -hmm. the big wagon. So you can get in and there's a lot of space back there. The seats contribute to that. It has as much space as those big SUVs that you've been looking at. I, but it's well, got this lower form factor, and it's better looking than most, and mm -hmm. it still has the ground clearance. They've done things with gray wood in here that is kind of classy. It's very classy. It's got the Bowers and Wilkinson stereo upgrade. Yeah. It has this great interface that we actually love from Volvo. It's very intuitive. It's easy to learn. We're fans, as you can tell, of yes, Volvo in general, yes. and they've done it again here. Every time. So this interface has four tiles, and it's really just the stuff mm -hmm. you need. But what's great is you touch a tile, and then it expands, so you can kind of see what's going on. You touch it again, and it, it retracts. Mm -hmm. But 
the especially the Sirius XM radio on here, it's just this long list, and you can scroll with your finger. It it just works like you think it does. Yeah, it does. It does. At first, it's a little confusing because it's not designed like the others. It doesn't look like everybody and else. And the screen's yeah. vertical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the form factor is a little bit different, but then you start to really look around the car and you think, well, this is intuitive. Like the engine start. It's a knob mm -hmm. by your right hand. You think, that doesn't make... It makes all kinds of sense. It's right here when you drop your arm. It's Saab thinking. You're, it's Volvo just taking a wink Swedish at Saab. Thinking. Let's just do a You're Saab. You're not buried behind the instrument yeah, panel yeah, yeah. down under the column trying to find... Where is it? Where's the start-stop button? It's very easy. And the drive mm -hmm. mode, it's a jewel-like, actually, cylinder. It's a roller, yeah. And you have to push it first to activate it, and mm -hmm. then you can select the drive modes, one of five drive modes, mm -hmm. and then you push it again, and that activates the mode. This it has off, just makes sense. It says off-roady mode. It does have off-roadio off mode. If you're, if you're doing less than 25 miles an hour, this will have automatic hill descent. It'll actually yep. be used to the fact that you're actually off-road. This has eight inches of ground clearance. That's impressive. Which is as much as most people that are shopping an actual off-roading SUV are looking for around eight inches. This has yep. eight inches. Of, and it'll do 11 inches worth of water fording. <laughs> It's astounding. The numbers. I, I'm surprised, honestly. And it looks this good, and the proportions are like this, mm -hmm. with very crisp features that are unlike every other car. The Thor Agreed. hammer headlights, those rear tail lights mm -hmm. that you know give you the nice blink, that nice welcome signature. <laughs> the things you can do with lighting these days. Yeah, for sure. Another note on the interiors: when I got in, I've never seen an instrument panel built like this. They're all molded, even though. I know mm. this one is, but they look bulky and too soft. The radiuses are too soft. This one is like luggage. Yes, that's a good point. It's like it's the very overnight crisp. bag luggage. It's not the kind that you send in the airport carousel. Volvo would also like you to know that they've got a new gray <laughs> color for 2021. Because gray needs to be celebrated. I colors, think it works. people, colors. I actually think it's sophisticated. It's classy. Uh huh. It's not all good news. I have a few comments that I, I have that I don't love about this specific model. Fair. But I'll do it after we swap. All right. You're right, it's not. But it makes me laugh. Here we go. I'm not afraid of muddy parking lots. Uh, well, you're not afraid of much in this. <laughs> the thing is that the average person buying an SUV probably isn't going to do more than this needs to do or can do anyway. Exactly. Which is interesting. I mean, this is absolutely, I, I think it's hysterical they're calling this a luxury crossover. Volvo, giving you what you actually need, not well, what you yes. think you need. Yes, that's true. But Volvo's been doing this a while. Go back to the Volvo V70 cross country. Yeah. They've had this for a while, kind yeah. of the body clad version of their wagon and that kind of thing. My, my issue is that I actually think in cross-country form, it undermines some of the greatness of this model. Okay, in what way? I think that the standard V90 is a better choice for people that want an SUV alternative and don't actually do fire roads. Fair. Which the because of the space? You're talking space no, alone? No, because of the driving dynamics. Okay. The right. lift and the box have undermined the driving dynamics well, sure. severely. I don't look at the box as a, a negative because you can put a box on any car. You can, and you, even but, but it's this the one is the Volvo box. It's the combination of the two. This is a Volvo rebranded box yeah. and it comes, you can get it with the cross country, which is why we have it on this press car. But, but the problem is that a box undermines a car period. I, I agree with that. Sure. But the fact that you've sure. lifted this and given it soft suspensions and can go off road and then given it a box, it's too soft. Volvo does another thing in a lot of their okay. cars here where I think the handling is also a little better than you expect. It is. This one is a little worse than I expected, and it's down really? to those two things. It's down to the fact that when you when you accelerate just now, I feel the nose come up because the box is acting like this parachute pulling the nose right. back, and the suspension is real soft. But so the box of, can be taken right, off. I know, but what, the whatever. suspension being soft on top of that, that one-two punch undermines the dynamics of this car for me a lot because I think that Volvo right now, the dynamics are generally better than you expect. They this are. This is a little bit worse. They are, but I think you're slicing it very thinly. It's not a a huge margin here. It's, We're it's not talking not, like, ooh, it's too soft, it's suddenly unmanageable and no, uncomfortable. We didn't, we didn't wind up with something bad, like full on bad, it's just I know that the non cross country version would be better than this and so I wish we had that instead. From a driving perspective, I fully agree, but you have to give that up when you're adding the cross country. 
you're you're knowing that, knowing what you're coming into. Yes, thinking. You, you have to have your expectations for it. Okay. But I don't no think problem. that anybody should buy this if they're not a person that really is doing the camping and fire road thing. Agree. If you're just buying it for wagon space, and you should and instead looks. of an SUV. Don't get the cross country. Sure. Get the standard one, which you can get in all-wheel drive. You can get in super duper powerful. Whatever. This is yes. such a fine, such an underappreciated model that the cross country to me is like the lesser of the model, unless you need really? that capability. I think so. Uh, what's interesting about the suspension is that this does have the air suspension, which is worth it. Mm -hmm. But Volvo has engineered their cars to be more neutral. They're trying to engineer understeer out of the car, even mm. though the steering ratio is fairly slow. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little bit soft right there, but mm -hmm. it's a cross country version. So yep. our expectations yep. to bring a driving feel are maybe a little bit too much. Lessened, yeah. <laughs> can I beat the trucks going you up the You can beat hill? the truck. That truck's going really slow. Yeah, this is a tough on-ramp, but you've got it for sure. You felt the, the breath. Uh, yeah. <gasps> Yep, for Whoa, sure. Oh, that's a big number. Uh -huh. I didn't realize it was going that fast. That's a Volvo number I, there. I, I can, a, hey, who knew? Yeah. Hey. All right. Well, fantastic. It's like a Swedish surprise number over there. Swedish surprise. <laughs> you won't believe how fast you're going. It is It is impressive, genuinely. In every category. So, yes, that neutral balance. And this is also a long wheelbase car. Absolutely. So, what's nice for road trips is it smooths out the, mm -hmm. the whole road trip experience like a bigger SUV. But then it does move smaller than it would suggest. I, I it's think, not a yes. big wallowy yes. thing. The numbers it moves better. suggest this will be heavy, slow, and sluggish. It is none it of is the above. Not it's not. None the, of you. Yes. It's primarily a front wheel drive car. Yes. But it's always looking for maximum traction, which is good. So it and can it throw 50% of the drive back. when you start. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just all-wheel drive all the time, but it's constantly shifting torque. What a great choice. You just don't expect it, especially for people who are tired of the SUV thing mm -hmm. and you don't want an SUV and you're looking for that balance. I agree with you. I would prefer the more road-going version of that. If you're going to get an off-roader, get a proper off-roader. Yeah, if you right? really need off-road capability, then let's go all the way. But th So this is trying to be that middle ground, which again, Audi's done it. Others have done it. The it's outback for ornithologists. Is Wow. If you're bird watching. I, I didn't think about it this being is an ornithologist perfect, thing, but apparently you can just we have found creep into the wilderness just far enough. Just far enough. Not too far. <laughs> just far enough. Uh, yeah. I'm currently turning on my uh, seat massage. I like this. This is good. The okay. seats are thin. And they They're do thin. everything. You can set uh, thigh length support. You can set the yes. bolsters, lumbar, you can move all of that around, and then you add the massage. And I'm just generally happy over here. <laughs> it's great. That part's awesome, yeah. It's great. Hey, there's an Outback. Nope, that's a Crosstrek behind me. I think I'll leave him. There's an Outback. Uh, there's an Outback, See? yes. They're, all, they're always somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're driving in they're the Rocky always Mountains, there's always an somewhere. Outback within about 10 cars of you. Just, yeah. just in a 10 car radius, <laughs> I guarantee you, one of those cars is an Outback. Yeah. Why couldn't one of them be one of these? I agree. And you the Volvo should come in a color. Like, it should have some color options. Yeah, Where, but... Drive your wagon proud. Drive it with, with a red... bright, flashy colors. Let's drive it with a red or really brightish blue. I, that would be awesome on this car. It would be striking. Yes! But then you can't creep along and the birds will notice you. you... <laughs> the birds will notice you. Don't want that. That can't happen.